So we're here at the Lunara Connect, and uh, who are you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm David Wrestling, and I have the privilege and honour of being the CTO. So what's the latest? The latest, well, the latest for me, I've been, um, I've been looking at the, loosely it's called Arm on Arm. So Arm has mostly been an embedded architecture where you develop software to run on Arm on an Intel platform or a whatever platform. But through the, the lifetime of Lenaro, which is about eight years now, we've been working on all sorts of pieces of software, and it's more and more true that that software is developed on ARM for ARM. So if you look at the, um, the server-side stuff, the stuff we've done with the developer cloud means that we are building OpenStack for ARM on ARM. So I've been looking across all of our activities and thinking about what more do we need to do to, to enable ARM development on ARM. So uh, as one example, um, we're part of Yocto. And at the moment, when you install the development tools for Yocto, they install on x86 and they run compilers that run on x86 producing Cortex-A code. So we could fix that, kind of. You, you can go in there, there's a tooling thing. I talked with, uh, with Nico and the folks. So it's really looking around at all the different places where we could be developing code for ARM on ARM and for other things on ARM. And it's part of the next stage of where we're trying to get to. You know, originally, if you think about it, we were just trying to make sure the software ran on ARM and ran, ran efficiently on ARM. Now we're, now we're kind of moving to a phase of it's developed on ARM too. Associated with that, um, well, perhaps I should say first, Actually, it's quite good. An awful lot of software just builds on ARM. So the, all of that work we did early on with the Debian folks, the Fedora folks, the OpenSUSE folks, means that an awful lot of software is built on ARM for ARM. And, and we've helped by developer cloud, getting machines out there. One of the, and we'd, we'd like to see more machines out there being used for this sort of thing. Um, and we've been working with a bunch of folks Producing that produce systems, so Socio Next, Sinquasa Box 24, Cores, um, it's got PCIe, etc. So that's quite a good developer host for that sort of thing. One of the areas, just out of, out of interest for me, is, and I'll describe why, is boot architecture. So, a lot of, um, if you look at the data center, then the system has to boot and be managed in with a particular set of tools, with a particular set of software, because otherwise it, it can't go in the data center. So that market imposes a boot architecture and a set of boot components. If you look at other areas, it doesn't. You know, you use U-boot here or some other boot over there, or, you know, it, it's, um, and quite how you implement things can vary. That, that creates what I call sand in the gearbox, right? It slows everything down. If, uh, and if you've got fragmentation down there, that, that has a worse effect because it stops people using these systems and deploying them and ultimately creating ARM software on them. So one of the, one of the efforts that Grant Likely, uh, if you remember Grant, um, has been working on is an architecture for the embedded space. So it's called the EBBR, the Embedded Base Boot architecture. Um, uh, no, it can't be a, a, a embedded. Ah, embedded base boot requirement. Sorry, that's uh, we can do that again. So I've yeah. been working with Grant, uh, who's been working on something called EBBR, which is the embedded base boot requirements document, um, and this recognises all of the things they learnt uh, from the data centre about how that boots, what the interaction between the kernel and the boots software is, where you put environment variables, how you get services from that layer, how that works. But, but recognizing for embedded systems, you use, you use um, U-Boot, for example. So the combination of, and people will continue to do that because they've written all the software and it just works. But there's a set of services that just aren't there in U-Boot. Um, for example, the, um, callback services that the kernel might use. There are extensions to U-Boot that allow you to run EFI programs to produce that. So really EBBR is about bringing together those elements to give you a solid boot architecture in the embedded state around U-Boot and EFI applications, right? So there's a, there's a process of standardization. There's a bunch of software 
that, that fits their net. I don't think that will that will be implemented everywhere soon. There are way too many devices, but where where it's important to get that right is in the gateways, in in the edge devices, because these devices are the keepers of security. And in a world where you want to update your software regularly and over the air, the old embedded way of you build a lot of software, you put it in a, in Flash or whatever, and then it stays there forever, um, you need to update it, and you need to update it securely, which is the thing that, that's the thing that drives the boot architecture. And, and doing that in the gateway will establish a standard, and then it'll, it'll migrate out to the devices. Plus, given my background, it's an area I actually understand and I can contribute to, and it means I get to play with pieces of code. But I think it's important to establish that architecture, and that will uh, enable and allow uh, more development systems as well out there. So the two are kind of linked. So, so uh, I feel very uh, privileged and uh, uh, lucky to be able to have done videos in Lenara Connect so many years. Yeah, and thanks you've been for coming that. quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, uh, but one thing I notice a lot is that uh, maybe still now, most of the developers are still using Intel laptops. They, they are, that's so that that, and that's a really good point. So um, they are starting, though, to... Um, it, it would be really nice to have ARM-based systems, laptops available, right? And um, folks like me, who, who are not writing code so much, so we don't have a, a real need to compile. So my main machine is, a, is an ARM-based Chromebook that runs Android apps. So I, my working life is on ARM, but you know, um, I have to then go, I have to SSH to a little machine to do my development. The Sinquasa box I talked about, Sinquasa system, um, is a nice <coughs> desk tied side box size box and a number of our engineers have those and are working on things and they and they've got a decent amount of memory in them for eight gigabytes whatever i even did an interview with the for example daniel thompson he says he was using it exclusively yes yes he is now da daniel's a great proponent of this and the guys inside lenara and our members are really keen to make this happen so they've really supported that and 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 getting the point that say there's developer cloud and then sinquasa boxes it would be really great if someone built an arm based laptop that you could run linux on because you'd sell well how many how many people are here this week it's kind of 450 you'd, you'd sell you know you sell 400 of them here because people just grab them um, and i think they will come i think those systems will come um, some of the other guys um, I've noticed are starting to carry around these ARM-based Windows 10 machines. And those have a, um, a Linux mode in them such that you can, you know, you can run Linux programs and compile stuff. So you can do some good stuff. And the same is happening on Chromebook with Google bringing to that the Linux support, which is awesome. So I think we're at the cusp of, you know, the start of enabling ARM developers to develop on ARM. Uh, it's a question of the hardware being available and then it will just take off. It's a real inflection point. So one thing that I thought was uh, made me very happy at the, at the last uh, uh, Computex, because for so many years I've been kind of hoping that ARM would do the marketing in terms of going after the Intel kind of laptop chipsets. But now they're officially saying the Cortex-A76 is uh, Core i5 class, you know, that's yeah, they are, aren't they? So yeah. it's kind of like sounds like they are going there. I, th I think, um, well, I can't speak for ARM and ARM's marketing department, but yes, I'm pleased to see that. I think if you look at the the sheer, there's, there's two things that have happened. One is the mobile, your mobile devices got more and more and more powerful, right? Uh, they're very capable yeah. devices. Um, and also, the, 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 these same companies are producing chips to go in the data center that are really powerful. Um, and so in between there, that, the, the real focus of the ARM ecosystem has been on the edge, the mobile devices that, you know, that we all love, and on the cloud. But the, the, that development system, the system you carry around, the Chromebook, the whatever, has had less priority, but they're coming. And it's sort of generation by generation uh, with some really great stuff. It would be so cool to see ARM take over that whole laptop market. Yeah, I, I, I'm a lover of the architects, so architecture. So I, I, I want my computing lifestyle to be ARM based, and that I mean that may say may, may seem a silly thing, um, but actually it's an incredible thing. If I, I I've been working in this industry a long time, and I first met ARM 
uh, back in the mid 90s actually and at that time the thought that I'd be sitting in a hotel room being interviewed by a chap like you talking about doing all my work on ARM and ARM based laptops is really crazy but yeah I think I think it will happen but in the beginning ARM was for desktops it was well, the, Acorn, the original Acorn, and yeah, then it yeah, went yeah. down to mobiles, and now it's maybe hopefully coming a little bit back. Not just, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's ninety nine percent the mobile, which is amazing. I guess that's but true. How about I guess that, to, I guess that's true. Yeah, it started off in the BBC Micro, and it was for education and the Acorn, the Acorn wrist machines, and all of that. Um, the genius part of the ARM story was their licensing model. The moment they moved to that business model then that just enabled ARM everywhere and it, and it arrived just in time for mobile phone technology needing it, right? So that really was the engine that's driven everything. So the evolutionary roots of, of ARM, the ARM ecosystem is in mobile, but it has over the years spread beyond that. And in fact, the last eight years of Lenaro have been all about moving into new markets, you know, moving into these areas that have traditionally been Intel. So there's been a lot of learning going. I mean, the whole move into the data center has been a learning exercise. High performance computing, which is just way sexy. You know, the getting, having, having conversations with people who are running thousands of processor nodes for months at a time on really difficult map, you know, modeling of physics problems. It is amazing. So yeah, I, anyway, to back to the point, I would love an ARM-based laptop, uh, and we're close. I think, you know, it's going to happen. So now that it's called the uh, Linaro Consumer Group, right? Yeah. So does that mean that there would maybe be, uh, that would be part of the consumer group to take care of something more to do with that, if that comes uh, to be a big thing? Well, to, the, the consumer group is really built around... Um, Android and Google and in fact I don't think of them as a segment I think of each of these things as an ecosystem so as far as groups within Lenaro so you have the consumer group which is all about mobile and Android and which that used to be technology. the mo mobile group right? it used to be the mobile group um, and then we have we have the data center group. This is confusing because we changed the names of yeah. things. So it used to be LEG, used to be the enterprise group. It's now the data center group with an HPC SIG. And so that kind of gives you both. And we have a um, light, which is an embedded group, which is focusing on clients such as Zephyr. And then in the middle, we have a group which is based around networking, the edge, the fog called Ledge. So we're covering each of these different areas and they're at different stages of maturity. But yeah, it's uh, all interesting stuff as it evolves. And also many, many years now it's been going on the server stuff and, and now has been at the forefront and hopefully now with well, the that, Thunder X2 and all the, the, the new Qualcomm chipsets and the more and more stuff, hopefully, yeah, you, it, you, is it going to take over the whole server market? The, um, you know, yeah, you're trying to get me to quote something. Um, yeah. There has been year on year, generation on generation, the, the whole... Um, arm in the data center has been maturing the software for that all of the work we've done to, together has really helped move into that market that's a very difficult market that's uh, you know to to build systems that are deployable into that market to understand that market is a hard thing and lots of companies have worked really hard to do it and they and the arm ecosystem has brought a lot of evolution and diversity into that but it will i think it will take a while because Corporate buyers, you know, change risk, etc. I think what's what's kind of more interesting is HPC, because that's a very different place to be. They understand what they want, and they're running very different workloads. So, like the the, uh, the super K, the post K stuff in Japan is a really interesting example of the ARM architecture going places. Um, and they're yeah. right here, the Lenaro Connect. Yeah, they are. So, so what, what do they looking for out of the Lenaro? They're looking for what everybody looks for from Lenaro, which is um, it, they're looking. It's a place where the ARM ecosystem collab. I know it sounds like a, it's a bit trite or, or whatever. It's where the ARM ecosystem w collaborates, works together on open source software. It's exactly the same point that Jem Davis made today in his keynote and in his interview, which is look. We have to collaborate, and Lenaro is the place we collaborate. Um, yeah, which I, I'm, and I'm really pleased with that, as you know. I keep describing myself as having the best job in the world. So, uh, how would you describe the success of Lenaro so far? Um, and what does what does the industry say about what you've done? I don't, I'm not sure what the industry says. Um, 
I'm pleased with I'm pleased with where Lenaro has got to. Yeah, I mean, and and let's be clear about this. It isn't Lenaro. It's its members. It's all of its members. You know, we we act as the place where we bring things together and we we help that happen. But it's our members adding, you know, engineers and doing work and producing processes. I'm really pleased that we are, we kind of are established as the place to collaborate. So we don't have to explain ourselves anymore. I don't have to tell you what Lenaro is. People know Lenaro. And that's really good. And our members have been members for a very long time. They've invested a lot in us, which I, I find slightly humbling because these are big businesses and it's, it's not small amounts of money. This is big investments over time. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm pleased that we're established uh, and that we are thought of as, as the place to collaborate. And I'm really pleased that we're covering all market segments which for me means I've got a really interesting life because I can be involved in technologies from, you know, autonomous driving through machine learning. I mean, the whole machine learning thing is really interesting. And I, and I say HPC, I rather, I, I think it's good. So from, from my personal interest level, I'm really happy that we're, we're involved in so many different areas and so many different ecosystems. So what is Linara going to do with the machine learning? Um, well, uh, look at the announcement announced today. The key, it's the classic problem, is the classic Lenaro problem to be solved is that there's a whole bunch of hardware out there accelerating neural networks differently. There are also a whole bunch of software around neural networks, deploying them, inference engines and all of that. And you, you've got to avoid, you know, everybody changing every code base to support every processor or acceleration engine. That, that is just too much work for any one company. So adopting a framework such that you can plug in support for particular acceleration, being able to exchange formats is exactly that. So the ARM and N announcement is part of bringing, that, bringing together a framework that works across all acceleration techniques from, from instruction sets such as SVE to hardware acceleration like NN to graphics. So yeah, it's, it's a good real world fragmentation problem that you can solve with better organizing your software and APIs and standards. It seems to be an opportunity with the new 7 nanometer. There's so much space on the die to do all this. Yes, machine there's never learning. enough space on the die, is there? I mean, yeah. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going there. But it isn't just at the high sexy end. I mean, the little microcontroller that can recognize your voice saying, OK, Google, right? Those, those are little Cortex-Ms. As Jem was saying in his keynote and, and uh, Chris was saying in his keynote, the machine learning and neural networks are being applied, will be applied everywhere. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's you're moving from an algorithmic technique of writing software to a data-driven uh, you know, inferencing thing. I mean, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of problems and issues and we have to work across all the communities to, to, to transfer the knowledge and do the right thing. But yeah, it, it's just everywhere. So it will be a big, astonishing change to all of our lives. So you can think of the medical things, things like uh, looking for diseases, testing, monitoring. No, incredible. So it's very important for the industry to collaborate. Lenaro yeah, yeah. is the perfect it, it, place it, to do it. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm proud of, that, that Lenaro is the place to collaborate on this sort of thing. And the byproduct is I get to work on really interesting technology and, and meet really interesting technical people. And in the, in the automotive, you're going to set up a whole thing? Is this, something's happening we, there? Yeah, we've been working on, certain, on various aspects of... Um, on automotive vehicles, autonomous vehicles. I mean, there's everything from the the sort of processes that are used inside today's car versus, you know, which is your, your electric car with advanced driver systems in them um, to fully autonomous cars. And obviously the machine learning fits in there because you can't do autonomous vehicles without neural networks and machine learning. So yeah, it all kind of fits together. So hopefully uh, the Linaro uh, assignees and employees are excited to, to join these new groups and do stuff. They are, there. yeah. Engineers yeah. like new groups and challenges. So yeah, they're, they're very happy.